Hey there, we're live April 18th, one day before the having. A lot to talk about, but not a lot to talk about. Um, in terms of trading, not a lot of trading going on because the price hasn't been doing much, but there's a, there's a lot of opinions out there on what's going to happen. So uh, this will be uh, hopefully a very interesting show for everyone. And uh, we'll get into the theme shortly. So it's probably just going to be me today. Uh, Richard's working on some design for for a, 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 so, some big project. And he, I don't think he'll make it out of his meeting in time. So you're stuck with me today. But, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any Canadians uh, in our audience watching uh, or any big hockey fans. But on this day, April 18th, 1999, arguably one of the best hockey players of all time, Wayne Gretzky, played his last game. So it was a very memorable memorable event for us Canadians who were around at that time. Okay, so first things first, uh, let's see, people come on board. Let's make sure, I'm sure everybody, could. hey, Jandre, I haven't seen you in a while. I don't know, I was starting to worry. I didn't see you, so I, I was worried maybe you're sick or you, or you got sick of me or something. I don't know what happened, right? Kor, Volodymyr, Andre, Soren. You know, Andre, you said two days actually, but I just looked on the, the countdown clock that Coinbase has, and it's uh, one day and six hours is what they say to the havoc. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just going on the information they got. Yeah, yeah, Corey. Yeah, you know the market does give us great opportunities. Um, I know a lot of people are feeling the pain right now from the weakness, and we'll look at that and talk about that. Uh, but uh, you know the market giving you pain is just par for the course of the trading, isn't it? So. All right, let me just make sure. And I'll just mention, too, if there's any questions, uh, we'll save them for the end and just put them into the Q&A section, and we'll be good. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Let me just uh, share my screen here. Uh, I'll go to the slides. We'll talk about today's – what? Oh, no. My slides disappeared. Oh, this is weird. I think it's because, uh, hey, you know, Andre's here too. Uh, I think it's because uh, my screen accidentally got refreshed and my slides um, are missing. But you know what I can do? Later on, I'm going to screen share my, uh, I can screen share the slides because there's some slides I specifically want to show you. Let me just make sure I have them. Uh, and what I'll do. Just bear with me. I'll open them in PowerPoint, and I'll leave the presentation open, and then I can screen share, uh, and I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll leave that down over here. I've got too many screens going on. Uh, let's see if I can do this right now. Oh, boy. Technical issues, eh? Hey? Uh, here it is here. Share. Okay. So let's go here. What, how do I make this bigger? Oh, play. I can go like this. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. That's not what I want to do. Anyways, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll just show you the screens. They'll, they'll be small here. I'll, I'll just make the window a bit bigger because um, I've got a technical, uh, technical issue. Anyways, as always, we're going to take a look at the current market, analyze it, talk a little bit about some of the trades you got, generally speaking, on, on the strikes price point, uh, and uh, expiries. Uh, some live trading. We're not going to really do any live trading today because there's nothing to trade right now. As far as I'm concerned, um, and I'll tell you about the trades I would put on if I had a flat position. And the topic is how long is Bitcoin going to go? Or is it going to go? That's 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 the real question. And uh, I've got my own opinion on that. There's a, certainly a lot of opinions out there in the world on what's happening. And I shared an interesting infographic with our members, our private members over at Rogue Trader Academy on the Telegram channel. And it showed every having, and it showed the, the decline um, and then the subsequent increase. This is the first having where we hit an all-time high. And then right afterwards, there's a having. So it's, it's, it's a different situation. And obviously, it's a different situation now, too. We've got, we had heavy, heavy selling from the ETFs, and which has now been picked up by a lot of buying. Uh, we have just a different world. We've got inflation running out of control. Like there's just there's just different factors. So, 
Can you really use the past ones as a guide? I mean, maybe sort of, but uh, probably not really. So let me go ahead and share my screen. We're going to take a look at the chart and uh, see what we've got going on. <clears throat> a little bit of a run up this morning. A little bit, you know, a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, something like that. Hey, let me make this a little bit bigger so you can all see it. I mean, here we are right now at sixty-two thousand three hundred or so, and we went up to sixty-three just very, very briefly. Whatever, you know, it's just market noise. You know, we're going to look back in six months, or you look at a a daily chart. This is just these are blips. These are nothing. It's absolutely nothing, right? Here's the thing, which what I've been sort of constantly saying to members. All this down, all this down has been pretty scary. You know, we are short a lot of puts because we think the damn thing's going up. But let's be honest, all markets have pullbacks, and we have the long-term view that it's going up. We could go down to 40,000. Who knows? I don't know, right? But by 2026, by 2030, whatever, you know, we could be at a quarter million or a million or whatever. You know, there's all kinds of numbers being thrown around out there. So these are just... These are inconsequential moves in those terms. Now, we do have some options expired tomorrow, some short puts that are in the money, right? Those suck. We're going to have to deal with those. But that's trading. That, that, that's life. The point I wanted to make was despite all this weakness, and, and someone could say, hey, every time we pop up, it's a lower high. It's a lower high. It's a lower high. It's a lower high on these technicals. Is that a downtrend? Well, surely that's, that's a little mini downtrend right here. But in the big picture, we still haven't broken this, this channel. We still haven't, you know, here, here's the bottom of the channel here, right? We, we, we wick down through it. That's normal for, for any, any asset to do that, right? We're still holding it. We're still holding that channel. And again, if you want to get, get a better look at stuff, well, we just go back out a little bit in time. You know, we're still in this massive uptrend. Could we have a bit pull, pull back down? Yeah, I think we could. It's certainly possible. I don't think we will, personally. I'm not going to bet my life or my farm on it. But I do think that it's probably rather short-lived, whether that's short-lived for a few seconds, a few minutes, a few days, a few weeks, maybe even hang around down here for a month or two before grinding back up. Could be. Could be. All we're going to have to do is just adjust our positions, right? So, uh, you know, until this thing actually breaks properly, then it's broken. Then we're going to deal with whatever we need to deal with down on the bottom. So that's my little soapbox for on the on the technical side. Still holding the range. We could easily be at 67 in two hours. Easily, just like we could be down below. There's been a lot of selling. Grayscale sold a lot. I mean, billions. And, and that was, and it held up. It held up. ETF inflows have been slowing down a little bit. I think uh, I think on the seventh, uh, or sorry, the seventeenth uh, yesterday, I think was the second lowest inflows. So you know it's a bit weak, but it still didn't break down. To me, that's kind of a bullish. Like, geez, you know, all that selling and, and inflows slowing down for for that particular day, it still couldn't bust it. It tested it. Uh, it's not to say it won't, but uh, you know, I'm still going to stick to my guns. Am I going to be heavy long delta? No, but I am slightly long delta, slightly you know, negative at times. If it goes down, you bet I'm going to be hedging that off of futures, right? And I may be selling calls, although I'll be very careful doing that because uh, these things have a, uh, have a tendency to wick and, the, and then move back up. So that's all I can say for that. Let me uh, share the screen and uh, we'll take a look at the Synth Miner account and I'll show you our stats from that. Here, I need to bring up the right, the right screen here. Okay. Share the screen. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I will share the um, PowerPoint or the keynote, whatever it is here, because I want to show you the updated stats. So these were updated uh, a few hours ago this morning. Uh, here it is. Boy, you'd think I'd get better at this faster. Uh, where are we here? Okay. Seven, it's been seven weeks now since we started this fund, right? Uh, exactly, to the day. Because as you remember, we started on our Deribit Live. Uh, we started with Bitcoin 0 0.0825, uh, current Bitcoin cash. So when you click on your wallet, that's a cash amount. 
it's 1106. So that's up. Our per current Bitcoin equity is 0946. Maybe it's a little bit higher at the moment, but when we took the screenshot, that's where it was. We're up. Bitcoin mined uh, 0.0281. So we've increased our Bitcoin by uh, 14.5%, a little bit more. Here's the cool thing, though. Um, okay, our cash is a little higher. Our synthetic mining annualized returns, we annualize it. We're on par for about 131%. But if we hodled, we're down 18%. Remember, we started this account seven weeks ago. So if you're just hodling, you're down 18%. We're up 131 So that's pretty cool. We can look at it graphically here. Here's our Bitcoin return versus hodling. Again, hodling is the red line. It's never going to change because you just hold the damn thing. doesn't matter what it does, right? So we're increasing the amount of Bitcoin. And what do we got here? We got the U.S. dollar return uh, with the synthetic miner account is the blue line against U.S. dollar return hodling. Now, obviously, they're both going to move as the price of Bitcoin moves, but we've got more Bitcoin, so we're going to have a higher number. So that's that. Uh, let me just go into, and I'm going to minimize this, and let's go into the account and just take a look if there's anything to do. I don't think there is yet. Tomorrow we will. Here's the since minor account. Uh, yeah, actually, that's a little bit higher than I, than I told you, but that's fine. Um, what do we got? Well, we got some options expired tomorrow. And this one, we've got it in the money put. Everybody's waiting. It seems like everybody's just waiting to see what happens if, if, if this, this having just sort of goes without anybody doing much or sitting on the sidelines and waiting. Okay, it's normal. Before any big event, a lot of times people just sit in the sidelines. Vols are still... Uh, fairly elevated we can see they're at 68.86 so they've come off a little bit uh but we'll see so the the question i get and i'm going to address this also when i look at the uh at, at the at the rogue trader account that the one we're trying to rescue uh or we will be rescuing is why didn't i roll those short puts before they went in the money and that's a valid question because well, I shouldn't say everybody knows, but I'm just going to say it's a hell of a lot easier to roll any short option before it gets in the money. As soon as it gets in the money, then you've got to make up the intrinsic value. So every, you know, this is 65,000. So I've got, you know, $3,000 of intrinsic value there. I have to make up on top of the time value. Now, there'll be practically no time value left, especially if I roll it tomorrow morning. Uh but it just makes it a little harder. You have to go a little further out in time or a little closer to to, to, to the money strike, you know. So it, it can be a real pain in the butt. Why didn't I roll it out? <clears throat> well, here's why. Support. When we're so close to support, I often will take the chance that support will hold or will bounce. It's one of those situations where you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because let's say this thing broke down. We went down to 52,000. Oh, that would suck. But if I rolled it the first time I got scared and it went back up, I'm like, oh, now i got to wait another month to realize that value that I could have realized. Only because it was right at the bottom of that resistance level did I let these slide a bit more. Now, when in doubt... If you're ever in doubt, just roll the damn thing. It's just uh, th that's probably the best thing you could do. Get it out of the way. So even if you it was if you, if we had these, it, it went down and I rolled them down to sixty. Then it threatened sixty. I rolled to fifty-five. Then it went down to fifty-five. And I rolled it down to fifty. Blah 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 blah. All the way down to forty-five, for example. Well, we'd be doing five rolls, and by the time we did that, we'd be five months out. Right? I don't like to do that. Sometimes I'm forced to do that. That's no problem. But if I can, especially when something has time left in it, I'll usually let time wear things away because we don't know what the market's going to do. It's a personal choice. In this case, I decided not to roll these just because we were on this big support level that we'd kind of managed and we're long-term bullish. Now, what am I going to do with these short puts? Well, that's a good question. Tomorrow morning. Let's just say I wake up right before expiry and I want to roll these things. I don't have to roll them right expiry. I can let them, you know, settle and then and then roll it, you know, on Monday if I felt like. But but basically I'm going to take this value, you know, let's say I have to buy it back for four and a half, 0.045 bitcoins. Where am I going to roll it to? 
Well, I could look for value, you know, out in May or something, and I'll roll it down to, uh, you know, 56000 or something like that. I could. I would, I would actually have to do it higher because I'd want to buy cover for it. But because we're long-term bullish, and this is a minor account, there's a pretty good chance that I'll be pretty happy to roll this to an in-the-money put. Maybe I'll look to, to the end of the month or to May 3rd or something, and I'll roll it down to a 62. Maybe it's at the money. I don't mind doing that, especially in this situation. Now, a lot of people, that, that common um, instinct is to roll it away. Just get it away. Get it away. You know, push, push, it, push it away from the price. Nothing wrong with that. It's nice always to keep that buffer zone so you always feel comfortable. You know, you've got space, and I like that, and that's normally what I would do too. But this is a minor account. You know, we're going to get a lot of premium. We might even sell it. Let's say we're, we're really thinking, hey, this thing's going to hold. Maybe I'll sell 65 again, and I'll make 0 0.03 of a Bitcoin doing so. I run the risk it's going to go down, and I'll do it with cover, of course. You know, if I if I sell this for 0 0.03 uh, uh, profit, I can spend that 0 0.03 on cover, right? So I end up keeping that 65, 58 spread or, or 60 spread or whatever it happens to be, okay? So in this case, with this synth, synth miner account, I'm going to be looking at that. Who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky and we'll have a big boom up tonight and uh, I'll get out of this scot-free or for, for very, very little. That's fine. Uh, the only other expire we have is the 26th. It's probably getting, yeah, it's right at, at the money. And May 3rd, again, right at the money. So if this thing plunges down to 55 or 50, yeah, 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 I got some work to do, but that's fine. I'll probably just roll those in the monies and just stagger them down, stagger them down. Even if it takes me two or three months to catch up to the price, when the price starts to go up, when I'm going down, it's going to pay me, okay? The danger, of course, is <laughs> Bitcoin goes to zero. You know, it could happen, right? It could happen to anything. If you train Tesla, it could go to zero tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, so that's that's sort of the danger there. Or we go down ridiculous down to 20,000 or something. It sits there for a year. It'll take a while to pull that in. Uh, but the best, the best practice is to roll things before they get in the money. And you'll always sleep and feel a little bit better. All right. Let's take, take a look at the uh, uh, the problem child account. Uh, where are we here? Uh, I got a... I don't know which account is which here. Uh, okay, here we are. I think this is it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, really here, uh, uh, sort of the same thing, except I'm constantly up to manage margin a little bit. Uh, right now I can see uh, we're, we're down bu bucket minus three of all down. So I have been buying a little bit of puts. God, they're expensive right now though, right? Because we see the skew. It's just redonkulous. I mean, you know, short term, right out to, uh, you know, what what is this? This is like, you know, well, the end of the month, basically. So, and then it goes flat. I mean, that that's as flat off as I've seen the vol surface in a long time once we get into May. So, you know, a lot of people in my channel were saying, oh, man, I should be selling this short term vol and buying the longer day to day. That, that's a great strategy, you know, uh, absolutely great strategy. You want to sell where the vol is high. Uh, but what am I going to do here? Let's see. Uh, tomorrow morning, no big deal. We're, we're at the money right now. Uh, I'm covered very close, and I got lots of downside coverage. Um, there's a technique I wanted to talk about with extra coverage, but I won't have time today. We'll maybe I'll think about that tomorrow. 26. What do we got? Ah, we're we're a little bit in the money, not too crazy. Uh, that's uh, what eight days away, right? Nine days away, seven days away, seven days. Yeah, next Friday. Got some May 3rds, a little bit in the money. Again, this is kind of an interesting situation because I don't normally carry so much stuff in the money. Uh, I'll deal with I'll deal with these as, as they come. Now, we, as we get into the week of April 26th, uh, will I take advantage of any, any price movements to move these out and adjust them? Sure, absolutely. You know, I don't want to just rely on the price saving my butt. You know, that <laughs> that's not a good strategy. But I will move them, especially that six. But if this sixty holds into next week, boy, what are the chances it's going to skim along twenty sixty and then go down? Generally, pretty slim. Uh, for, from a technical aspect, we're probably going to have a move back up to mid or high sixties. But I mean, we, we could break down to it. Anything could happen. So, really, here I'm just I'm just sort of managing 
um, the margin, uh, imagine the risk. I've got you know short calls that they're going to go out that uh, some of them I've got cover orders in. Really not much to do because the margin's a bit too high. I can't take advantage of things right now. And I know that if the market breaks down, I'm going to have to manage in the money short puts and I'll need as much free margin as I can get. So I'm keeping things, uh, you know, not putting any new risk on it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, one last thing. If uh, anybody's interested in uh, how we're managing the synth mark uh, mining account, uh, of course, you can join us at Rogue Trader Academy or, or check out our live streams on patreon.com, Rogue Trader Academy. And also, I put a little special offer here uh, in, in the thing. We've we started a 45-minute gold member discovery call. This is for people who want to join us, be gold members. They have a private uh, little bit of coaching, kind of one-on-one stuff each month. Hey, you know, book a 45-minute discovery call. We can chat about your goals, what you're doing, where you've been, where you want to go, all that type of stuff, and see if you'd be a fit for our gold program. So there's my little plug there. Uh, what else we got going on? Um, I think that's probably it for the trading. Um not much to talk about. Uh, if anybody wants to discuss anything of this, I'd love to hear your opinions on whether you think the 60K, this bottom of the channel is going to hold like I do. Again, I'm not I'm not betting my life on it, but I got a sneaky feeling it might hold. Once this having stuff is over, and maybe that's why ETF inflows have been a little bit muted lately. People are kind of holding off to see. Maybe we'll get a dip down to, you know, 50. And it'll be a better opportunity to buy. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, I, I do know that the ETF inflows have slowed down. And I know that iBit now is catching up to Grayscale in terms of the amount of Bitcoin it holds. It's still it's like a, a couple billion dollars away. So it's really caught up uh, rather quickly. So without further ado here, let me get my mouse over here. And we'll go to the chat. And let's see, you got questions. Uh, slides are halved. The slides are halved. Andre, were you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because I couldn't I couldn't share it without seeing what, what I was going on in webinar. I couldn't upload the slide deck as I actually I did upload the slide deck, but it disappeared because I refreshed my screen. And the only way to get it to show back up is if I close the call and reopen it, which I don't want to do. Anyways, uh, Dominic, Bitcoin definitely still bullish. Also big RSI, okay. Divergence is forming the hint to a potential push-up or at least sideways for some weeks. I agree. You know, I, I tend to agree with that. Uh, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Um, but I've, I don't know, I've traded long enough where, where you come to the bottom or the top of the range and you get little poke-throughs, 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 and it doesn't go. Even if it does go eventually, you're looking at some kind of retracement. They pull a lot of people in. Um, I was uh, reading an article about um, the massive, the massive um, uh, liquidations that happened here, and then another article saying that if it went up to, I think, seventy-one thousand, would be over three billion in liquidations. A lot of people got short. And you know the market's going to screw the most people it can. So would I be surprised to see 68, 69? Not at all. Liquidate the hell out of some people. I wouldn't be it, – it's, it's become too obvious. That means doesn't mean it won't happen. But I've just traded these enough times where if it's too obvious, it probably ain't going to happen or at least not in the way you expect it to. Uh, Dominic says, for these kind of situations, I try to parse the role – Yes, exactly. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because in my examples, I only showed 0.1 of a Bitcoin. In other accounts, if I've got 0 0.2, 0 0.5, or 0.8, or 1.5, or whatever amount of Bitcoin sitting on a certain strike, absolutely, I will partially start to spread those out and spread that risk around. Not only to, if, if I'm dealing with short puts, I'll move some down, maybe one by two of them if I'm feeling brave. Maybe I'll push them out in time and in price. Maybe I'll strangle them out as well. Now, strangling them out right now, to me, is a little bit risky because I feel like we could bounce, and you're not getting so much in the premiums, uh, short-dated premiums for the, for the calls. Um, Longer-dated, yeah. 
but but you got to do what you got to do. You, you don't want to concentrate risk on any one strike or expiry. But yes, absolutely. Don't just leave it there, just sitting there and praying that, you know, the market's going to be kind to you because it doesn't usually work out. So always, I split that up. Always, always, always. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Ludmir, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Rogue Trader Academy account isn't looking that good. Like the the equity amount. That's right, because we lost some Bitcoin. That's why it's our problem, child, that we're going to rescue that account. That's what our job is. And right now, I'm not putting any new risk on because the margin use. We've got a lot of risk that's further dated that we still need to bring in. I just need that time to bring in. But give me two or three months, and we should get that back up to snuff. Um, unless we have a, you know, if we go down to 15,000 Bitcoin and we're all sort of hooped and <laughs> our accounts are all going to look pretty, <laughs> pretty crappy. Uh, okay, question from Gene. Uh, and we're almost out of time. So this is good timing. Uh, how do you define vols to be cheap or expensive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it mostly based on historical levels or is the way we learn here's what it means? Uh, that's a good question. It's a really, really good question. So we can look at the DVOL. You know, we can. Um, if I look at uh, – why on earth can I never find the right screen here? <clears throat> uh, this should bring up uh, – yep, yeah, okay. This brought up a screen. So if, if, if we look at, at the volatility index – now, this is an average, right? So it takes an average of, of the last 30 days. But it, we, we could look at it more accurately with, within the hour if we wanted to. But we can see – what it's been doing, you know, what's been happening over the last month and where people's expectations lie. We can look on the, on the daily and we can see how high and how low we've gone. So we've got these crazy spikes way back in 2021, right? 150, 160 vol. Are you kidding me? And that can never last. You know, that can never last. If you see that and you've got margin, sell it, right? It's going to last a few hours, a few minutes, a few days, whatever. Uh, but we, we see this fall and we can see the average. So really, we're, we're not all that crazy, you know. So I guess we just have to take it in stride. We can take a, a snapshot of this and say, OK, you know what, 68 vol, uh, it's not extremely high. It's not, you know, we've been down to 30. It's, it's a bit high. And just sort of gauge it. But we have to take it in context with what's happening. We've got this halving company. We've got all the ETFs happening. So it's a, a lot more volatility. So it's just sort of a, uh, the longer you look at a particular asset, the more you'll get used to its vol string, uh, swing. So if you're trading oil, for example, uh, or the S&P, you're going to get used to how much the S&P will swing intraday, intramonth, intra-year, and how it tends to kind of stick. Like when you look at the VIX now, it's ridiculously low. It's been so low for so long, right? It, but, you know, uh, volatility falls in the stock market as prices go up, and S&P has been doing nothing but going up lately. Uh, oh, boy, that's going to be a, a rug pull on that when that comes down. But who knows? Uh, so to answer your question, it's a, it's a, little, it's a little bit of both. Uh, um, the other thing I will mention is that oftentimes when you get uh, a vol swing, it tends to trend in one direction. So if it's been high for a while, it starts to come off. People say, oh, it's coming off. I don't want to sell it anymore, you know, because it's down a bit. Oftentimes people will keep piling on and keep pushing it down and then it'll slowly turn around and then go back up. Anyways, a uh, question from Dominic. Today I realized that since I'm holding most of my collateral for options in crypto spot, I should actually always buy way more puts options as a hedge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if, if you want to, yeah, that or you're, you're going to sell futures, right? Um, yeah. The thing with selling or buying puts, um, like anything, is we rationalize it in our mind, say, okay, this is insurance, it's going to protect me, it's insurance policy. But if we go week after week, month after month, and those things uh, expire worthlessly, we get kind of pissed off. And we tend to back off like, well, you know what? I've got three Bitcoin in my account. I'm only going to cover one of it or two of it or something like that because, oh, it's too expensive. I'm tired of losing money. You know, that's, that's you know, when the snake bites. So uh, I always like to do those as spreads. And in the case of put spreads, I might not be doing one by twos to make it a free, you know, free insurance because you've got the risk down at the short strikes. 
but you're at least cutting it in half if we do it as a spread. Let's say you're scared of it going down, and right now you buy the 60,000 put or the 58,000 put, uh, and you and you sell the 50, and let's say that's worth a, about half. Well, you know what? You got the insurance for half price. I can I can live with that. I feel like, hey, <laughs> I got a half price deal. Um, but but I, I do agree. Um, we, we could easily go down and we could stay down for a while before we go back up again. We're long term bullish, but yeah, either either buy the puts or sell the futures. Um, yeah, it's really up to you or maybe do a combination of both is what I typically do. So uh, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Andre, thanks again for your input. I uh, hope you're right on the balance. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know, I, I, again, I'm not going to bet the farm on it, but uh, I've been in these situations long enough where where I've seen that happen more often than not. Now, of course, Bitcoin is so subject to any news from anywhere, and it you know it over exaggerates everything. Um, how big of a resistance level is 6061? I don't know. You know, I don't know. We've had low ETF inflows. We've had a lot of selling. We've had uh, a scare about the halving. It still hasn't broken it. <laughs> now that I say that, it'll probably plunge down, right? But uh, who knows? But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, mid to high 60s um, fairly soon, just as I, it wouldn't shock me if we actually broke the 60,000 either. But if we do break the 60,000, I don't think it'll stay down there for a long time. Uh, and a long time is relative, more than one or two, three months before it, we, we come back up. That's just my my uh, personal opinion right now. Uh, Vladimir, if we want to protect our position by selling futures, we can actually sell futures, but not uh, perpetual in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm i with you on that. I sell the dated futures because I don't know if I'm going to have them for two days or for two months. So right now, I, I typically am selling the, um, uh, the December contracts. Um, you know, it, they have a, well, actually, here, let me take a look at the funding rate. December's right now, you're paying about 10%. Uh, so the cheapest one right now is the uh, May, May 31st. So I, I actually should be selling the Mays or, or buying and selling the Mays. There are seven and three quarter percent. Uh, just a little bit closer. You might have to swap the Mays into something else. Uh, but I, I was just in the habit of, of using the Decembers over the last couple of months. But uh, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll swap those. Uh, in, into maze to save a few percentage, but you're right. If, if you're, if you're going to be a perpetual futures are great. And there's two things I'll mention just before we wrap up this call. The downside of perpetual futures is they can cost you an arm and a leg. And in fact, they can wipe out your account if you hold, hold on to them long enough. The good thing about them is they're super liquid. So if you have stop market orders, let's say you, you, you're, you're protecting yourself against a downside. You say, Oh man, you know, if 59 breaks, man, I am in. Like Flint, and I'm going to be selling these futures to offset, you know, to get my delta neutral or negative or whatever to offset so I can have time to deal with my in the money short puts. Fine. You'll get that fill and you'll get it, you know, much closer to your order entry price than if you were using the December because they're a little bit thinner. So when you put that stop market order, you can use a stop limit order too, but there's a, there's, there's a chance you're not going to get the fill because it puts a limit order when it hits, hits that, that. So I use stop market orders. But what you can do is you can use a stop market order for the perpetual contract. Just get the damn order, then go into your uh, 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 strategy screen and swap out the perpetual for the dated. Right, because you don't know if you're if it wicks down through fifty eight, maybe it's going to go back up to sixty two in a heartbeat. Right, you might be, be getting out of them right away. You might be holding on to them for months, and you don't want to do that with perpetual. So, anyways, um, I think, uh, da, 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 da. yep, I think I think that's oh, we got one more question here. Uh, Dominic says, "I meant buying the insurance when price is up." and put options or two. Oh, yes, yes. I do that every day. Uh, and if we look on, on any of my accounts, you'll see that I'm on, on, the, on the 20th, uh, on the, uh, uh, the, the why, why is my screen on the, on the 21st? I've always got bids in there on the wings, usually around 10%, sometimes 15% out. Almost always, I'm picking up quite a bit on the opposite side. So if we're moving down, I'm buying calls. 
I'm always buying short dated calls. And oftentimes I'll use those to sell against and I'll, and I'll create a spread out of it. But if we get any kind of a pop up, you you bet I'm buying puts and I'm always buying them when it's cheap. I, I'm a total believer in that. They've saved my bacon so many times. And they and they tend to balance out. You don't you don't get as big as swings in your equity when you've got that wing protection, right? Because that's that's always a bit, a bit of a killer. All right. How much margin with PM you'd suggest to use on average at max? Well, you know, we, we like to say around 30%. 30%. When you got a little small account like these little ones, these dinky ones we're trading here for, for demo purposes, it's harder. It's a little bit harder. Uh, number one, you're tempted to trade. Uh, and number two, you know, if you get a big move, uh, your, your your margin can really swing around, uh, especially if you're you're really on the opposite side of, of that move. With bigger accounts, it's a lot easier to keep your margin low. And, you know, let's say you've got a, a $250,000 account or a half million dollar account. You can just say, look, I want to be making 15 bips a day or 10 bips a day. You know, you can you can keep the risk super low, super low. Use, you know, six, seven, eight, ten per, I mean, it just depends. I mean, it's just it's just a different game. Right. So you tend to got to stick your neck out a little bit more with these small accounts. You don't have to. But uh, that's that's the. Uh, I suppose that's the instinct. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, about it. So anyways, 30%, that's that's what we always kind of recommend people sort of maxing out at. That way, if you get a big move and you end up going up to 60% margin, you've got plenty of firepower to either buy protection or to, to do whatever you need to do. So uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, hopefully, uh, two things. So hopefully next week, Richard can join us. I'm sure he will be able to. And uh, let's see how this having goes. Um, Andre seems to think it's in two days, but Coinbase is telling me it's tomorrow in, in, in one day in five hours or something. But we'll see. Let's keep our eye on what happens here. I'm still in the camp that we're, the 60s is going to hold. Boy, famous last words. You guys can roast me next week if we plunge down. If we plunge down, we'll just deal with it, just like we deal with any other big move that's, that's uh, you know, maybe – uh, not quite expected, but uh, could be could be could be going flat for a while. Yeah, yeah, we could. We could just stay in this range, which I'd love because we'll just accumulate more Bitcoin if we stay in the range. We'll just sell the bottom, the tops of the range. But I'd love to have it move back up in the high sixties to give us some relief and get out of those short puts and sell <laughs> sell calls. And we'll get into trouble on those next week, right? No problem. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me and uh, good trading. And uh, let's have a happy post havoc.